Good evening and welcome to Touchstones. Uh, I'm your host, Don Levy. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are an eclectic guide to health. Uh, my co-host is Irina McCarchick. Thank you for joining us, Irina. Oh, thank you. Nice to see you again. You always look so nice and different. Every and time different. You, and you look There's so a, the same. It's, it's a kind of a comfort factor for the folks I love home, that, you know, though. Yeah. But we have uh, Rebecca Carchier with us once again. Thank you for joining us thank again. Thank you. We talked a lot about nutrition in general. And one of the things that we never actually touched on is how did you become interested yourself? Oh, boy. In, uh, in your own nutrition, and how did that work out? It's an interesting question. A lot of people ask me that, and um, it's a very unfortunate, it's a tragic story, but it, the it happy was a ending, happy we ending. Hope. The happy ending, <laughs> yeah. Um, my grandmother was very unhealthy at the time when she had a stroke while she was babysitting myself and my sister, and she died right in our living room. And I was just devastated. How and old were you? I was 12 or 13. Jeez, um, I mean, did you have to call for help? Did you know what had yeah, happened? I call, yeah, I called the ambulance. It was too late. Wow. And, and so that really stuck with me. And years later, um, I started reading up about nutrition and uh, realized the power that we have by the food choices that we, that we make. And I realized also through books that I was reading that chronic diseases are really what we do to our bodies over decades of our life. You know, we essentially, we do, we, we bring the diseases onto ourselves. I mean, it's a, it's a harsh statement to make, but it's, it's, you reap what you sow. So I realized if I eat a salad versus a cheeseburger, I'm going to live longer, pretty much, you know, in a nutshell. So I, I was, just became aware of the power of the food that we eat and how it will, um, if you give your body what it needs, you will see awesome benefits and you will have uh, longevity. Which so you weren't always a health food nut or something like that? I don't know how to put it. No, but, you know, no, I was not. You're an ordinary American? You actually yes. ate a cheeseburger in your yes, life? Yes, I went to McDonald's many times. Okay, cool. As a kid. You As a kid, always at McDonald's. It's almost like the 12-step how to get off yep. McDonald's kind of thing, right? Yep, soda, you know, little tater tots, all the junk you can make. So how did you make the change? Was it like falling off a table or was it slowly? How did that all work? No, it was pretty drastic for me when I, first, I said enough is enough. I want I wanted to be in control of my life. Was that when your grandmother died? or? No, that was about three years later okay. when I picked up a book and realized, you know, why someone like herself who was not healthy mentally and physically, how that ended up, how she ended up and why, and I, that, was not where, my, that was not my plan to be like that. So you almost kind of, when you read that book, saw yourself as your grandmother and said, I don't want that future? Yeah, that's, that's not me. And because what doctors will tell you is that it's genetic, it's genetic, it's genetic. It's inevitable, nothing you can do about right. it. Right, thank you, yeah, exactly. And I, I from, from there, there's no doubt in my mind now, I know the power of what we do will inevitably pan out in the long run. And my, my goal is to live to 100 and have, be fully functioning, not be in a nursing home, not be on medications, be able yeah. to take care of myself. That's what, it, that's, that's what drives me. And I believe that that's completely possible. Yeah, it absolutely is. Now, how quickly did it take for the changes in your diet uh, to affect your health, your vitality, your sense of self? Did you look better? How did that work out? Once well, again, it's like 18 minutes or 18 weeks or 18 and years. And what were your bad habits besides uh, I didn't McDonald's? Want to bring off. <laughs> <laughs> so so like that we go from, he from yeah, yeah. so it's a measurable... Um, well, it is, it is a gradual process. Initially, I did radical dietary changes. I lost a lot of weight. I started exercising. Those were all immediate results. Um, because I made immediate changes. Other things were more lifestyle things. You know, I, I was smoking at the time. I didn't give that up for a while. I, you know, I tapered down, but I was still smoking on the weekends. I would still drink on the weekends, and it, it's, a, it's a process. So what I tell people is that just go one step at a time. Don't think about, oh my God, I have to change my whole life. It's almost like the Alcoholics Anonymous. It's not like a whole life without a cheeseburger. Right. Because that's almost too much to bear. Yeah. Well, you have to eat. Alcoholics yeah. Anonymous, you give that up completely. So right. you're completely abstinent, but with food, you know, you, you have to eat. But it's right. just what you put into your body. Right. So what kind of change did you notice? Um, I noticed um, more energy. More energy. Sleep. Without caffeine? Oh, I, I wasn't drinking caffeine at the time. Man, oh man. I know, I know, I'm sorry. That would <laughs> be this something was, too. This was years ago. This was like 13 years ago when I finally made these lifestyle changes. And, um, you know, just uh, feeling better overall. Obviously, the weight loss was a big thing for self-esteem. Um, just more energy, better sleep. Those were the biggest things. Did you lose your weight? As, was that your primary goal or was that sort of as a byproduct of your changes? 
to be healthy. It was a motivator, but my goal was I, I didn't like where I was. I was dissatisfied with my health at the time. I was smoking like a, almost a pack a day, drinking, you know, drinking on an everyday basis alcohol. You know, I was, you know, at, at such a young age too. And I said, I am not going to end up with a disease or with, you know, in the hospital. And I just, whoop, did a 360. And what made you choose this he uh, holistic uh, way of doing it? Like some people would go on a crash diet or take diet pills or do something like that. Well, what, <laughs> what guided you into um, holistic kind of nutrition and looking at Yeah, your... I mean, you could have like some false starts. Yeah. You have yeah. the right idea, but up... the wrong modality. Yeah, I right. did have, I, initially I did have the wrong approach. I had the, you know, the idea was planted, the, you know, the, the motive was right, but I was doing the wrong things. I was like drinking diet soda, thinking that that was healthy. Boy, is that not. Okay. Mm. And I learned that the hard way, I would have um, migraines, horrific migraines from the diet soda that I thought was so wonderful because we think diet is better than regular. Yeah. Not true. You're doing Anything pretty diet. Much standard things, just trying to do everything you normally did, but just better. Yeah. So how did you end up with the practice in Fairfield of nutrition, being a nutritionist and doing this kinesiology? That's yeah. not your typical. No, uh, no. And now you're doing this total body modification. And yes. What's the other one? The, the Contact reflex analysis. I mean, how did, yeah. how, did you, how do you go from, you know, your grandmother a stroke to doing that? Because to do that? You could have been a surgeon or you could have become. That's true. How, do you know where, where you, you, you took that Decision turn? points on the path. Well, I think when I got that first book, I said, I think I'm going to be a nutritionist. Ah. Um, and well, I hooked up with a chiropractor at the time when I was living in Staten Island, and she said, I need a nutrition assistant. Would you, would you want to work for me? And I, at the time, was working at a, at a restaurant, a waitressing, and she said, you know, here, here could be your chance to get out in the field. And so I learned. I, I, I worked with like her. It's almost like an apprenticeship. Yeah. Well, you had an interest, yeah. then you got an opportunity, and you just said, let me try it. Yeah. And you didn't know how it would end, end up. Exactly. <laughs> but what was interesting was that she wasn't just a chiropractor. She did applied kinesiology, which is a, which is a cousin of what I do. It's all utilizing acupuncture points. So this she is what you did on me last time. Absolutely. And yep. you said that I probably was in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I, I forgot to tell you, I did go to the hospital in Florida. Because, because of my ear was hurting me and I had an ear infection. Yeah, an ear and infection. you figured it out just by, by letting my body tell me. Right, right. Very interesting. Yeah, usually people will tell me that, oh, yeah, I, just, I was sick last week. Or, oh, yeah, I was in the hospital. So That's after you've discovered something about their body. They said, oh, yeah, and by the way, here's oh, by the, the reason. Way. Out all the time, my patients will give me half the story and I'll finish the rest when I test them. Yeah. And I think that's oh, yeah. a true testament to yeah. this uh, kinesiology really being um, it's powerful. powerful and it really works because a lot of people that I know, myself included, will say, this doesn't really work. What's all this like pointing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is just kind of hokey. There's no blood test. There's no, yeah. there, give me some science behind this. But after going to Rebecca, I mean, I can't. It does look hokey. I mean, there's no doubt. You know, I, I know that when patients come in that, bear with me, I know this is a little odd, but it's, 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 good, it's what's going to work. It's a real good signal for yeah. what's going on. It's what we're on. accustomed yeah. to and what we think works. It's exactly. whatever we think works. Yeah. Now, two ways to go. I want to ask you about your, your regimen nowadays. Yes. How does it differ from the standard American food and stuff? Well, <laughs> um, you eat three squares a day? Oh, uh, yeah, and, and snacks, and okay. snacks. Um, I, I, I get that question a lot. I've been, I've been teaching in adult ed. I do a lot of lectures, and always someone will ask me, well, what do you do? Because they want to know, like, if I'm giving them rules or telling them what's good and what's not. Are you walking the walk? Exactly. So I put it in my newsletter this time around, so everyone knows what I do, so there's no question. Um, I eat a lot of whole foods. Um, the reason why is that I believe that the more processed foods that we eat, the more detrimental it will be for our health. Our bodies do best with things closest to nature as possible. So rather than having um, bread, I'll have like brown rice or you know some type of whole grain because the bread is more processed. Would you have that sprouted bread? Is that whole sprouted food? is fantastic? Yeah, I, I I recommend Ezekiel bread mostly. But so that's my that's my rule of thumb to my patients. Is where try do you to go? Eat, where do you shop? 